How are you? Welcome to my kitchen again. We're continuing our series on entertaining, and today, I'll be honest with you, I do not approve of what I'm going to do today. We're going to serve a stand-up buffet. There's also a sit-down buffet, but I don't like to stand around uh, trying to eat. This is not the first time, of course. We're not the, uh, uh, we're not the first uh, crew in America that have done this. I think it's probably popular because of our Puritan upbringing. We don't want to waste too much time eating. We've been taught that eating and enjoying the table is wrong, just as enjoying our passions is wrong. Uh, biblically, of course, that's not the case at all. Uh, so I rebel. For me, the uh, stand-up buffet is a sign of a quickie America. And we invented it. Did you know then? The first time that anyone stood up to eat their lunch, and no, it was not in Europe, no, the Chinese would never consider such a thing. It was in New York in 1895 at the Exchange, uh, the, at the exchange Buffet in Manhattan. And they came, the businessmen, loaded with Puritan guilt and the urge to go back out and produce, you see, would come in and they could have a glass and a plate and they would serve their own stuff and uh, then run around and go back to work in nothing flat. During the 1900s, we used to serve buffets that were terribly elaborate. They would spend days and days and days working on a terribly elaborate dish. And these were displayed, of course, the joy of the eye as well as the tummy. Uh, in our time, uh, the idea of uh, eating standing up generally means a milkshake. It's not good for you. French fries, it's not good for you. Uh, and the rest of the stand-up that I don't like. So uh, let's, uh, let's have a good one. We can have a, a neat time. I'll show what, what to do, first of all. Uh, I want to remind you that when you have a buffet, you don't want to have a lot of sloppy things on the plate. So I'm going to make a lamb curry for my guests uh, because it can, it'll be thick and uh, rich and it can go over the rice and it's not going to dribble on the carpet. And don't think that's a small problem. You should see my carpet. All right, let's begin. First of all, make your own curry powder. Uh, we're going to start today with a curry powder that uh, uh, you can vary this, of course. You do anything you want. But we're going to start with a half tablespoon of cardamom. And this one happens to be ground. I would prefer that we had uh, cardamom that was not ground at all. And we need a tablespoon of cinnamon stick. And I'm just going to break it up here. There we go, because we're going to grind all of this up, you see. There we are. And we need to add uh, some whole cloves, about a quarter tablespoon. I should keep these on a different plate here so you can see everything. A quarter, uh, that's not a quarter, that's, that's better. I don't want to get this too heavy. But you can vary these any way you wish. It doesn't really matter. And now we need some cumin, C-U-M-I-N, cumin. A quarter tablespoon of cumin. And then we're going to add some nutmeg. And the nutmeg is simply ground right out of the grinder here. I want about a quarter tablespoon of that too. That's almost a whole nutmeg. Isn't this a wonderful little gadget? It has a blade in the bottom, you see, and you can just keep turning the crank. Does it work? Oh, yes, we've got enough there. That's enough. That's enough. And we'll go on now to some turmeric. This is the thing that you most commonly see in curry, because cheap curries, no, there's no such thing as curry powder. That was invented by the, for, the, for the sake of the British in, uh, in uh, India a long time ago. Okay, I want a um, tablespoon of turmeric. See, now that's the bright color. You see what's happening? Tablespoon of turmeric, and I had to pry that out of the jar, I'm sorry to say, some whole coriander. Wonderful seed and about, uh, about a half tablespoon of coriander. As much as possible, please use whole seeds. Grind your own. Some Indians, um, the Indian families will toast these seeds in a frying pan before they grind them up. But since some of mine were powdered, I couldn't do that. Then I want some black peppercorn to taste. I'll say, um, I'll say a half a teaspoon. I don't want this to be too terribly hot. I have some little friends coming over too. And some dried red pepper flakes. You know what I mean by that. And oh boy, that, that's where you get the heat, so be careful. You can uh, just do it your way, do what you'd like. And one bay leaf. And we'll grind all of this up. I'm going to use a coffee grinder, a German coffee grinder. There we go. To make real curry, you see, you don't buy that powder. Now we'll grind all of this up. Just slip it right in here. Already the odors have begun to mingle and I can smell the approach of a curry. A wonderful thing. It's very practical to serve, too, because you, uh, you can uh, put it on the buffet and then uh, sit down and enjoy your guests. And that's part of the, the learning how to party properly. You don't, want to, uh, you don't want to spend all of your time in pain running around the kitchen. Have things all ready by the time they get there. All right, here we go. And we'll crack all of this up. I think we're ready. Let's see. It doesn't have to be terribly fine. Perfect, perfect. And I'm just going to use the lid here for a, 
measuring device for a minute. If you don't have a coffee grinder, I don't even grind coffee in mine, but if you don't have a coffee grinder, for heaven's sakes, remember that for fresh herbs and spices, that's the best thing you could possibly use. You'll have a wonderful time with them. And the, oh, you can't find normal curry, curry powder that has that much life. You see the, uh, the bottle, when the, the spices are already blended, they sit in the bottle and they lose their individuality. That's the word I wanted. So now uh, they are th they're blended together, but they're still uh, separate in another way. Very good. Okay, in we go. Let's try this one now. I have some lamb, and I've prepared about three pounds of, of um, lamb shoulder, and I've sautéed it. You see, uh, brown it first, and don't, don't flour meats for heaven. You've heard me say that before. Don't flour meats. You're just, you're just browning flour. Cook the meat so that it, it is uh, colored a bit. Into a hot kettle, about three pounds. Not the kettle, the lamb. Now we have three sautéed yellow onions. Or more to taste. That looks to me like more than three. When I'm cooking, it's hard for me to tell you how many I've put in. You know how that goes. And some garlic. Oh, I'll put in four cloves. How's that sound? Using my trusty garlic press. You know, the people that sell garlic presses uh, bless my name every morning now when they, <laughs> when they go to work and start making garlic presses. I hope that we've gotten America to eat more garlic. You all seem to tell me that when you see me in a shopping mall signing books or something. You run up and give me a, a hug and a clove of garlic. And I think it's very funny and very wonderful. Okay, that's enough. That was a big one on the last one. I'm going to quit. So we'll cook the garlic in with the, the lamb now. We're going to add to that. We have our, our, toma our uh, onions already sautéed. And we're going to add to that, notice I'm using the back of my knife, never, never the, the sharp edge. See, never the sharp edge or you'll dull it. So use the back of your knife for a scraper. There. Now we've already sautéed the onions then, the lamb is ready to go. So now we simply add to that two, uh, let's see, what have I got in here? Three cups or two cups of uh, broth, of chicken broth? I don't remember. Um, thank you, two cups. And we'll bring that to a simmer. Now we're going to add curry to taste, our curry blend that we've made. I don't even like to call it curry powder because some of you are going to cheat and, uh, and want to, uh, to go uh, pick up prepared curries and you're just not going to have as much fun. I'm going to put in, uh, I'm going to put in most of this. There. Oh boy. There. Ouch. Well, let them, let them, let them, uh, let them eat curry. I think it'll be fun. It's going to be a little warm. Now, curry should make you cry. You should weep and wail when you have curry. I see no reason not to. Now then, we're going to add some fresh ginger. And again, this is something that you, you can't use dry ginger and get the same delicious flavor. It just doesn't work. And this little thing that looks like a washboard for tiny people is a, a ginger grater, porcelain ginger grater. You can find them in any Japanese or Chinese market. And more, most gourmet shops should have these for you. There they are. They're really expensive, about a buck and a half or something like that. And uh, there. Oh, now it's going fine. Now, now the, smell, the smell of ginger is coming up to me. Oh, that is gorgeous. And a little bit of um, uh, additional salt. I haven't put any salt in this yet at all. Not much. You want to you wanna cook this down a bit first before you, you do too much more. And certainly not much more pepper. It's, it's probably amply hot now. All right, I'm going to cover that and let it simmer for about an hour and a half. And in order to thicken it, let me, let me change postures on you, because I have one all done. Owie, where are my pot holders? Here we go. I'm going to thicken that with a bit of, of cornstarch. Put that one over to cook. And this one is already finished. There you are. Oh, it's wonderful. But you see how, how wet the gravy is? See that? You can't serve that on a buffet. Oh, I know some of us have tried, but I don't want you to do that. So what I'm going to do is to prepare a bit of cornstarch and water. This is very simple. Just put the cornstarch into a, oh, I don't know, three tablespoons? You might not want to use all of this. And then dissolve it in water. This way you avoid lumps. Cornstarch is wonderful for thickening. It's very easy to use, and uh, it won't lump, off, uh, lump up off on you if, if you just stir uh, at the last minute. You know, mix it in at the last minute, as I'm doing now. And then we'll, ah, there, we'll keep stirring until you feel no more, well, until the fork stops grabbing the bottom of the bowl. You know what I mean? You have a nice solution here. There. That's not a solution, it's an emulsion, immersion. 
stir it. All right, there. And in we go. We'll just blend this in and it will thicken. Look at that, see, right away, right away. Don't stop stirring. There, all right, the, the dish is finished. Taste that and correct the seasoning. You see how, now it's going to hold onto your plate properly. You see, no drips. Got that? No drips. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about your guests. I'm talking about the spoon. There. Let me uh, put that on the buffet, on the table right now. I'll need a pad for some color. And I certainly need a bit of cork to prevent it from burning. Now, we're going to serve that with rice, and on a buffet, if you just stick a bowl of rice out, it looks rather drab, so I put one in a, I put one in a mold. Uh, this is simply rice with a bit of, um, of pimento and green onion. Uh, what else do I have? Oh, and some parsley. You know, it doesn't matter what you like to put in yours. Now, with any luck, it'll come out. We'll see. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Well, it's not doing it. Hope this works. There we go. Come on. Come on. da da Boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid that was a close one for me. If you don't oil these molds properly, uh, things are going to stick. Try spraying them with Pam, and then you can have lots of fun on a buffet. As a matter of fact, we're going to do a whole show uh, on the molded meal, and it will be fun. Not moldy. I didn't say that. I said molded. There. I think we'll put a bit of parsley in the center of this, just for a little dress up, kind of a messy dress up, and that would be served alongside of your, of your uh, lamb curry. Now, for our next one, we're going to go on with the, uh, a very quick vegetable timbali. I'm not even going to give you the recipe, uh, because it's, uh, it's so utterly simple. You take a, a bit of egg and mix it with some cheese, uh, some vegetables, a little chopped ham, put it in an oiled timbali mold or a little bitty, you can use a, an egg cup or anything you'd like, a little large egg cup, you see, or a Chinese tea cup, and then put, uh, put an aluminum foil lid on these and put them in a pan of water in the oven, about an inch up on the side, just about an inch, and let them uh, sit in a 375 oven for about 40 minutes, and uh, look what you get. They're kind of a tiny, tiny souffle, but they're heavier because you have a lot of cheese in it. And they're a wonderful course for a formal buffet, a sit-down, a stand-up buffet so that you can, uh, you can run around and do a lot of eating without uh, spilling all over yourself. Incidentally, here's a secret for your buffet. Keep, uh, keep things covered with wet paper towels, that is to say the cold things, until your guests come, such as lettuce, you see? And then uh, everything will look fresh and nice and you can come to the door to... There we are, there's one. Come to the door and uh, invite them to sit down or enjoy the house. Did you see that? It says 40 on the back. 